People's Radio United. And out there at the Standing Rock protests, the no DAPL protests, as we speak, the police are moving in and evicting protesters actually a day before they were told to leave. So the eviction was supposed to happen tomorrow. And I'm going to guess there were plenty of protesters who were like, well, I'm going to get out tonight or whatever. And they don't have that option anymore. The, not only that, the, the police are censoring live streams. They're censoring media. If you want to be media out there and you want to report on it, you have to be a certified as credible by the police. So um, obviously shady things are going on out there if they want, if they don't want any independent um, feeds, video feeds or any independent um, reports coming out of there. You know, that's, I mean, that's just the, that's, that's, that's what people do when they have something to hide. They make sure nobody can come in and see them doing it. So there's something to hide there. And, you know, also there's been this thing of protesters, this, this uh, propaganda that the Morton County Sheriff's Department has been putting out that protesters left behind all this garbage. And, of course, it doesn't take much to unpack that and debunk that. If the protesters left, be, left and left behind all this garbage, why the hell are the police evicting them? They're not there. They already left and left their garbage. So um, I think the police are trying to get the protesters out of there before they can finish the garbage cleanup that they've been doing so that they can demonize the protesters and make future pipeline projects easier. And uh, Michelle, I want to hear your take on what's going on out there right now. Well, clearly, um, you know, what's happening is the kinds of um, attacks that we've seen on protesters all over the country. Um, in, in this particular case, the, the situation is really toxic because um, there's a lot of business interests and money involved in making this pipeline happen. Now, that same company um, that is uh, pushing the pipeline has a really bad safety record. So, of course, people are naturally very worried about the quality of water. And also, you know, this country has a bad habit of building really toxic kinds of um, things like pipelines and um, and garbage burning areas and things like that in areas where um, marginalized people live. So, because, you know, they don't really care about, you know, um, about um, the kinds of um, environmental racism, you know, that are involved in that stuff. So, when you have a situation with a lot of money involved and a lot of racism involved, um, you need a f- group of people who are willing to do damn near anything to enforce you know, the, the status quo and the situation that benefits these rich people. So, you know, so what you've got is you've got really thugs that are more than willing to um, do what they feel like they need to do to enforce the so-called rights of the rich. And that's exactly what we've got going on in Standing Rock. Um, and the governor and uh, other, you know, legislators have done a lot of things in Standing Rock or in, in the state of uh, uh, North Dakota to make it so that um, the uh, the cops are empowered to do this kind of stuff. Um, one of the things that they did was they they were a part of, there's a thing called an EMAC, Emergency Management Action. I can't remember what the EMAC thing stands for, but basically it's, um, it's a permission for police departments to help each other. They enter these voluntary agreements. And when one um, state says, I need those cops from your state to come here and um, back us up, they put out a call. And like, for example, here in, in Minneapolis, Hennepin County Sheriff's deputy um, deputies went from here using military. They brought their military equipment and they brought a large number of personnel and dro- went to North Dakota and basically got to beat up on folks, you know, which is like the, their favorite thing to do, um, you know, in an open range where they didn't have any real accountability because they were in an- another location. So this is the kind of stuff we're seeing. And it's a kind of thing to like, we're going to see more of this because under the, the Trump administration, you know, or what I call the Trumpocracy, the, powers that be, you know, they've really been unleashed to, to kind of um, bring out a really 
bad agenda. And they're also, at the same time, simultaneously unleashing the cops to really go after protesters who disagree with that agenda. So it's really a, you know, kind of a two-way thing going on here. We've got the agenda and we've got um, the cops being um, pulled in to really enforce this agenda. So that's, I think, a lot of what's going on here. And, and frankly, there's little control. The governor's encouraging violence. Um, these EMACs encourage violence because they're, they, you're bringing in cops from other locales who have no, you know, um, real sense of, uh, res- you know, restraint about their conduct in these places. And this is what we've seen that's resulted in, like, for example, that young woman having her arm blown up by a, you know, by a flashbang grenade and things like that. It, all these military tactics being used on uh, peaceful protesters. Yeah, that was awful. That thing with the uh, the girl's arm being blown off by a grenade. And, and we were talking before the show. Tim brought up a good point. Um, that probably wouldn't have even been a thing. It probably wouldn't have even been a big deal. But it was a white girl. Well, lots you know, of people have been hurt. I think you're probably really right about that point. You know, um, it's it's really about it's not just you know. So now what we know, I mean, I think it's so um, what Standing Rock has laid bare that a lot of people didn't get before is that it's not just like some rogue cops kind of out here operating on their own and you know some bad apple and all this foolishness. This is systemic brutality and violation of rights of peaceful protesters, people who haven't done anything wrong. You know, they're protesting to save the environment for everybody. And here are these courageous people doing this stuff, and they're getting brutalized wholesale. And it's not just, like I said, some rogue cops. This is by the direction of the, um, you know, uh, energy transfer partners people, the governor in league with those people. They're, they're telling these cops to do this, to brutalize these people. And so, you know, people have to be very clear. This isn't like just some rogue cop, you know, whatever. This is by um, definition, by design, by, you know, it's planned this way to to do this. And part of why I think, you know, again, and even coming from the Trump administration and from the top like that, it's to show, you know what, people don't resist. There's no you're, you're going to get hurt if you resist there. You don't have any rights. We're going to trample your rights, you know, with impunity. If you resist the resistance is futile type thing, you know. All of this kind of stuff, I think, is very much um, where they're at with this right now. And it's so, in other words, it's a coordinated effort, multi-state, that is um, that is 100% encouraged by the government and the profiteers that are making the money off these projects. Well, yeah, I don't think it takes a rocket scientist at all to figure out that Morton, Morton County Sheriff's Department is on the oil company's payroll. You know, I mean, it's it's under the table, no doubt. But like at this point, it's just pretty much a foregone conclusion. Is there proof of it? Not that I've seen, but, you know, uh, uh, the actions of the Morton County Sheriff Department is really telling in this case. And it's oh, my God, it's it, this. This just really sucks because a lot of precedents are being set here. And I, I just. I, would I actually knew it was going slightly to be different way, Steve. Um, if it's okay with you, I'd like to frame it slightly differently. I think it's a taxpayer subsidy to the energy transfer partners security force. I think it's the other. I mean, I think the taxpayers, what they've decided is, is that this thing is going through no matter what, and the taxpayers will have to pay for busting heads to make to force it through. And so I think it's actually kind of, I mean, I don't doubt that I'm sure there's some kind of a thing where they give them a little money or whatever, and they do things and buy them donuts or whatever the crap they do. But I think that it, what really this is, is taxpayer funded security for a private corporation that is def- you know, despoils our our um, environment on a very regular basis, and you know what, and on top of it is violating um, Native American treaties, and basically the government's just saying, "Screw you, you have no rights." And while you're at it, we're even going to make you pay for it. Yeah, I I, I will go along with that. Um, can I and, can I say and, something? You know, it's funny. Oh, go ahead, Tim. I think I think it, it it's both what you guys both said kind of put together because i think how it works is the the 
the pipeline companies, the big oil companies, put money into the city and the politicians, who then fund things for the police like weapons and tanks and military things that they think are cool. And for the personal officers, they get o overtime to go out there and brutalize people and have fun doing it. I think it goes all the way down to everybody kind of benefits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. uh, yeah, I think it's very the nail on the head there, Tim.